Welcome. My name is Doug Morton, and I'll be highlighting the advanced deal topic today. In this video, we'll be looking at what's new in the 2023.1 version of PowerPack for advanced steel. The pan tread option has been added and has many options available to help in the creation of this tread type. Features such as the ability to control the interlock at the nosing, indent for concrete retainment, and vertical nose face have also been added. To begin with, we're going to take a look at something that a lot of people have been waiting for, and that is the pan treads. And here we have some tools that have been added in as pan treads for straight stairs. To look at this, I'm just going to open up the dialog for the staircase. And in here, I'm going to head down to tread. If you go to the area marked as type, you'll now see they have a new button in here that allows you to pick the folded pan tread. And once it's been selected, the model will update. You'll see that folded pan treads will come in. And you can adjust the dimensions from the very next area. Under general, this gives you a lot of information about the folded pan tread. Not everything is set from this screen, however. So you'll see some areas are just for information, but the first three you can control from here. So if you want to change the thickness of that tread, you have that option. If there is an overlap in the step, you can set your overlap here. And the tread depth is also determined from this screen. So how far from the bottom of this pan to the top of the lip from the step or tread before it. To make additional changes, just scroll through the tabs, go to detail one. You'll see now they have the ability to create the nose fold. So if I turn this off, just to show you what that is, you'll notice that in the front of the step, in this area here that comes up at the front, is what we consider the nose fold or RF if you look at the image here. And you can turn that on. You can adjust what the length is and what the bend radius is. For you. In addition to that, we have the create riser heel segment. So if I uncheck this, you'll notice that the entire back edge goes away. We have just the front. I can leave this on, however. And when I do that, it, everything comes back, but I can control the top separately here. So the part that comes up and over is controlled at the bottom here under fold two. And again, you can control what is the radius and the length. Under details two, we have a couple of additional options for our folded pan treads. And in here, you can say for the front, instead of coming up directly as an angle, you can create a vertical nose face instead. And when you click that, you can see everything adjusts. You have the control for the face depth, how far you want that face depth to come in from the edge. And what is the bend radius? And when you create that vertical face, you'll also notice that the step in front of it adjusts to continue being lined up with that. We have an additional option at the bottom here for tread indent. So if you need to create that tread indent, you can do so here just by turning it on. You'll see it'll give you that tread indent or the concrete retention point. And in here, you have what is the set out point? How far does it come out? You can control that. You have the included angle and the bend radius on each side. So this gives us the ability to create now our folded pan uh, treads. Um, not only just the standard ones, but also with vertical faces and that concrete retention point. Along with the pan tread, additional dedicated connectors have been added, which include plate, angle, and folded plate. If we come to the dialog, you'll see there's an area called connections. And down here, we have three new ones added on the flyout. The first one here pertains to 
plates, which can be placed in both under the tread and along the backside. And then you have the option of just welding that and some general tools to determine what the size of those plates are going to be. You can do it with plates or profiles. So if you wanted to change to a profile, you can do that as well and select a different profile. We also have in here angles and you can add in angle supports, which can be welded. And in here, you can choose the type of angle you want to use, the size of those angles, what their lengths are and how they're placed in. What is the vertical and horizontal cut if you need to have corner cuts added in as well. And finally, they have bend plate. The bend plate support gives you the ability with one continuous plate to support both the bottom and the back of the tread from one to the other. And then you can see in here as well that it will be either by plate or profile, profile being flat. And you can come in and you can also add in a bare nose set down if you want. So if you need to have an additional angle or bend, in here, you can then create that additional bend and have that come off from this point and then come lower down on the back side of the following step. The pan tread feature has also been integrated into the landing elements with independent controls for bottom, intermediate, and top landing creation. Some of the similar features have been added into the landing, and we'll take a look at that. If we come up here, we'll start with the nose. Uh, as it is right now, you can see I've got this in here, and it's doing an upturn of 90 degrees. And let me just right-click, and I'll open up the joint properties. We're going to come down to landing and features, and you'll see nose is turned on. Now, you can turn that off completely if you want. That will go away, the landing will end straight. If you do turn it on, however, you do have the option to say, I want it uh, turning up or down 90 degrees, or you can say, angle it according to the tread that's in front of it. So if the tread is on an angle and it's not straight, you can have that in line with the, the angle of the tread itself. On the backside or the heel, over here now we have the option again to enable it. And if we enable that, you can see that I'm going to get this heel come in. And let me just look at it from the front. I'll do it again. This way we can see it a little bit better. There's the heel. And if I, oops, not the plate itself, but if I go back to the joint properties, in here, I have some options. So let me just go like that. I'll zoom out a little bit. And here. So yes, we can do the upturn 90 degrees or downturn. You have control over what the length is. We also have the option now for upturn angled to tread. And then it takes into account what was the tread size and the angle of that tread. And you can see it's going to come in so that it's angled in the same direction as the tread would be. If we had another set of stairs going up here, it would line up with the direction that those stairs should go. In. From here, if we want to have a lip created at the top, it's just a, an option. You turn that on, and then you have control over that lip as well. And you can set that to whatever length you want, change the radius. You have under covers too, you can say, make it the same as my treads. Whatever the treads are set to, adjust this to match the treads. And you can see it's got that bend. Now I have the vertical face that was in the tread, and it's coming up over the top. If you uncheck same as treads, you then have control over the vertical nose yourself, which you can turn on or off. Turn it off, you'll get your lip back here. And if you do a tread indent, you can still get that as well. You can see that indent is going to come in. So that way, if you need to have your concrete fill line or node with the pen, you can have that set there. Right? And you can control what the angles are and what the size is and so on. So this gives you control at the platform 
in order to create that first air for the next set of flights. If you want to have that enclosed pan that goes up in front of it and it's part of your decking, you can turn that on and it will give you the same features that you're getting with your steps so that you can match the rest of your staircase. Elements classified in advanced steel as H-type, such as HSS, are now available to use as stringers when building the staircase. Another new feature for the 2023.1 staircase is the ability for the stringers to use HSS type elements now. These elements have been added in and you can now utilize them directly through the dialog when building your staircase. I'll open them up here so you can see that as an example. If I come to stringer now, we have plate and profile and under the profile, we have the ability now you can see HSS type shapes, square, rectangular, so all H type elements are going to be in here and you'll be able to utilize those as you go along. I'll put one in. Let me pick something a little bit larger. Yeah. Say 10 by 3 by 3 eighths or something. Okay. And you can see the elements themselves are being used. Those are the HSS type elements. And if I come up to the corners, it handles them, it'll miter them properly and place them in. This works with many different types of stair types as well. So you can use it with the straight stairs, straight stairs with mid landing, two flight L, U and Z, and the three flight U and Z, and with all the bottom and top landings associated with those. The camera creator released in the previous version has been enhanced. Items like multi-line text, new tokens, and search queries have been added to the dialog. With the new 2023.1 version of the Power Pack, some new features have been added in to the camera creator. We'll take a look at that here. Uh, first, I'm going to just kind of hide everything except one of those racks. And I'm going to switch to 2D wireframe. Now in here, I'm going to place the camera creator. So I'll come to the camera creator tool and we're going to make a view from the front. So we'll do an elevation. For the description, one of the things that they've added in now you'll see is they have new tokens. And another thing that they've added in is the ability to use multiple lines. So it's now a multi-line window with a scroll bar when it becomes necessary. And we'll see that here in a second. So I'm just going to type in here, elevation okay, for uh, power pack. And then I'll come down. I'm going to use this here. I'll say grid line. And I'm going to come to my tokens and I'll pick grid line. And then I'll come down here and I'll do grid intersection. Now the text is not necessary that I'm putting in here. It's just so that we can see it. So grid intersection, and I'll pick the token for that. Now, if we keep going, if, for example, if I were to come into here and say uh, line, I'll just type that in, enter. The minute we come to, for example, our fifth line or one that goes outside the window, you'll see that this becomes available and we can scroll up and down. So you're not limited to just what fits into the window anymore. You can keep going, you can add additional lines and what have you. I'm also gonna come here now for the Z depth. We'll just put something in here, uh, let's say 18 and 18. And then for the overall field, I'm just gonna put here fixed is going to be, let's say 70 feet along the X and 40 feet along the Y. Now keep in mind that wherever you put, whatever point you pick, that's gonna be kind of the center of the camera. The drawing style, you can choose whichever drawing style you want. And if you want to use user styles, it's just a matter of checking the button and then picking the style. This is the same as before. This hasn't changed. And now we also have the option in here to select our parts based on our queries. So I've made a query here or a search item to find only my columns and beams. And I can come in here and I can use that. I'm going to say, Select that, so that way I create my drawing using only my columns and beams. Now, if you want to mark the selection, you can. You can see everything that is in that query will show up. 
I did not take the base plates. I did not take the bracing. Okay, I'm going to clear that marking. And I'm going to say place camera. In here, because I've picked uh, the tokens to use the grid lines, I'm going to come in. I'm going to place it on the intersection of those grid lines. So let me just come into here and place it like that. And then I'm going to come back. You can see there's my camera. I'm going to create the drawing. So I have my camera in place. Output, drawing process, all cameras, page full NCT. All right, so once I've done that, I can right click, say show camera detail. And you can see now I'm getting the camera detail. It's going to come in because I use my search query. It's finding only my columns and beams. No bracing showed up, no plates showed up. So it used the search query to filter things out. And the tokens, calling in the grid line and grid intersection, you can see are in here. I get the SR1A, which is the grid line it's on. And then for the one that I put in the intersection, where I put it at the intersection, it's finding that line as well. So SR1-3 and 1A. So you have now the ability to go in and uh, create your own titles, use multi-line text, Use the grid line, grid intersection. There's also camera level if you want to use the cameras and use that to bring in the information about the, the camera level. You can also go in and use search queries now to filter the parts to bring in just the parts that are inside that search query. In this release, when using the column tool with the work plane levels, it allows the column to be attached to corresponding multi-grid work planes. So a little bit of an update has been done also to the multi-level grid under power pack. We'll put that one in just as an example. So multi-grid level here. Um, I'm going to come into here. I was going to say 20 feet and 20 feet. Keep it simple. Uh, numbers for one direction and letters for the other. And if you look at my spacing, nothing complicated. I'm not going to do negative levels. So I'll just do the levels in the positive direction. Okay. You can do projected grid if you want. So in here, you can see it's created that for me. I've got three different levels. I'm going to change the heights to, let's say, 8 feet and 16 feet, which 16 feet is kind of the default for uh, column heights out of the box. And like I said, you can do projected or not. Now, some of the options we had here before, like for example, right now, if you look at model views, right, I have... Uh, level 0, 1, 2. And that got created because I created this grid line, set of grid lines. It didn't exist before. So the minute I've just, I determined which levels I want, it generated those levels automatically inside of our Project Explorer. Now I can also do things in here. For example, I want to have a model view and you can see they get created as well. Right? And I want the camera turned on inside the model view. You can do that too. Um, they also have now you can lock your levels. Now, the level locking was something that before you would put your column in 16 feet and it would go from bottom to top. But if you came back in here and changed the height, the column didn't change heights. Now, there's still an extra step that needs to be done. Now, we have the option to tell the program that says if these levels change, any parts that are locked to the level, move those with it. But it's not going to automatically lock your parts in, right? First of all, you would have to put your parts in, and we'll see. We'll have to lock them between the work planes, and then it will adjust those parts for you automatically just by changing the grid lines, the height. So in here, we're going to change. We're going to do that. I'm just going to put a piece in. I'll show you what I mean. Under objects, I'm going to take the column. I'll put it in right here, and you can see it's going to go all the way up to the top, right? I'll put another one here at, let's say, C. It goes to the top. Now, if I were to come into here and change the level, and I said, no, no, I want that to be 12 feet, not 8 feet. Well, the level moves up, but the column doesn't. Okay. So it's not growing with it. It's not the, the grid lines are moving, but the columns are not. Now, if I come back, I'll put it back to 8 feet, and I lock these. And I change this still, it's not going to change. I'll tell you right now. Because those parts 
are not on a locked layer. But either way, whether this is turned on or off, it's not moving. Right? What this is meant to do, and it doesn't automatically lock your parts to those levels, but what it does do is if you lock your parts to those levels, now when you change the heights, those parts will move with it. So now that I have the columns in here, if I were to lock them, and I'll do that right now, let's say I hadn't drawn them in there at that, I could say zero, and I'll take the top as two. And I'm going to say I want to lock or attach elements, both of them at the bottom are locked. Now the top one, I'll attach the element. I'll just do the first one. And I'll attach that to the top. For the second column, I'm going to change it because that's already drawn in. So attach element. I'll do this one. And I'll just lock that in. You can see I've attached the top of the second column to level one. And this I can turn on. If I wanted to draw them in initially, I could use this to set it and it would bring them in at those heights. Now, now that I've locked the bottoms at zero and this one the top at eight feet and that one the top at 16 feet, because I've used my tools to lock my parts in place, when I come back to my power pack multi grid, it says, look for that lock ability. Check to see if those parts are actually locked. And now if I come back into here and I say, well, this one here is going to be 12 feet high, you can see that it's going to move up okay, because they were locked there. So adjusting now the, the grids will also cause your parts, anything that is locked to those levels, to move with it. Okay. So that's what that's for now. If I went to the middle one here and I said, okay, no, the middle one here is going to be 14 feet or whatever, you can see it grew and it's bringing that middle one up. The top one's still at 16. It just changed to two feet. In other words, cumulative 16, and this one's 14. So it's bringing that middle one up with it as well. So this is how you can create your parts. Use the standard tools for locking your parts in, and then whenever you change it inside the multi-grid level, it's going to allow you to use that lock level to move those parts at the same time as you move your grid. The camera browser provides the user with a tool that can be used to manage multiple camera instances within the model space. Through this tool, the user can edit various parameters of a selected camera. One of the new features that's been added into the 2023.1 Power Pack is the camera browser. And if you go to the Power Pack tab, you'll see right here the button for camera browser. Now, I have in my current model, I have six cameras, but you may have 50. Tracking them all, for figuring out where they're located, trying to pull up the right one can oftentimes be a little bit frustrating. With the camera browser, now you can just left click on it and you can see everything's going to be listed for you. Um, when you're doing this, when you click on it, it'll highlight it for you. So for example, if I click on this, you can see it gets highlighted for me. I can see exactly which one it is. Okay, so if I need to make a change, it'll highlight that camera, show me the one that's currently selected. Once you've got the camera you want, you can go through and you make changes to, for example, what is the camera type? Maybe I forgot to put that. I want to define it. Um, I want to make sure that they're all set. The descriptions, well, I put some descriptions in here for the two big cameras, my plan view and my elevation view. And you'll notice I use the token mentioned earlier for the plan view height, as well as the one that was shown for the grid lines. We have in here different tokens. If you didn't put something in and you want to use those tokens, so you, you, know, you have your grid line, you have your grid intersection and your camera level here. You can always add that in after the fact from the camera browser. Your drawing styles, which one was selected. So if you don't like the drawing style that was selected, you can go pick something else. You'll notice that these drawing styles are prefixed by advanced or user, depending which ones you know, want to use. And you can always select your user styles just by checking the box down here. And then the available styles will be your user styles. Uncheck it, you get the advanced styles. Your scales, not set, not a problem. You can come back into here and you can set your scales on each one. 
your front and rear depth can be changed. You have in here your X delta and your Y delta. And if you don't like that, maybe you want to go back to automatic, you can just check the box. It puts it back to automatic, or you can make the change from here for what your delta is for that camera. And you can adjust it and hit apply. Now, just to kind of demonstrate this, I'm going to come into here. I have some smaller node cameras and they're a little bit too small. We'll see that in a second. There we go. They're all on the same sheet. You can see they're a little bit small. The, the, the detail could be larger. I want to change these four. Right? So yes, you can go into the model. You can find that camera and you can stretch it and then you can find the next camera and you can stretch it and find the next camera and stretch it. But sometimes locating them is not always that easy. And you want to do it quickly one after the other. Well, this, the camera browser is, makes it life easier. So you can come in here. There's my node cameras. Figure out if those are the ones I want. Usually with the description, it'd be easier to tell. You can set your front and rear depths here. You can set your X and Y deltas here. So if I wanted to come in here and change these, so let's say I wanted this to be 48 and 48 instead of oops, 24 and 24, I can just come in and I can adjust them. And I'm not having to find the cameras to do it. They're already listed. When I'm done, I can just hit apply. And I can close it. If I come back to my output document manager, you can see I need to update that sheet now. I'll open the drawing. Right now, they're the way they are before. Just to see, just by changing the values, it doesn't change it. Not on the drawing, at least. So now if I come back into here, I'll select it. I'll say force update. And then if I come back to that sheet, you can see now that they are much wider. Give me a greater area or a greater perspective for these details. Again, if anytime you need to make a change, you can just go back to the camera browser and say, well, I need it to be a little bit bigger. I want to show a little bit more. Uh, I want to change what I put as my uh, description for those cameras, what group they're in. Is it an intersection, a node, so on and so forth. So under Power Pack, Camera Browser, you have access to all of those. You can make changes to all of those. By the way, while you're picking your drawing style, if you click on the GA styles only, it'll show you only your general arrangement styles. So you don't see anything for the plates or assemblies, single parts, assemblies, uh, only the general arrangement drawings. Okay. So that gives you the camera browser. It gives you a quick overview of what that is. A very handy tool to list all of your cameras and to very quickly and easily make changes to them, add notes, change your styles, adjust the camera sizes, you know, even turn on model view activation if they want. Um, you have the ability to do that as well from here. That's it. Just hit apply and then close it. And everything will update according to your needs. A data migration tool has been introduced in this version in order to bring key information across from one power pack version to the next. This handles only information strictly controlled by the power pack, but touches on areas such as joint libraries, special parts manager, profiles, materials, and more. Hope the presentation has been helpful. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.